Hey there, it's Amelia. In this video, I'm going to explain KDP audiobooks with virtual voice. And before I begin, if you find this video helpful, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's get right to it. I learned about KDP audiobooks with virtual voice after receiving this email, which says, congratulations, you're invited to participate in KDP's beta for audiobooks. Starting today, you can produce audiobook versions of your eligible eBooks using virtual voice narration and reach new customers by making them available on Amazon, Audible, and Alexa. So on my list is to create audiobooks. So I'm gonna give this a look and see if my books are eligible. It has these steps here. So first we have to go to the bookshelf. So you do have to have existing eBooks in order for it to tell you if any of those books are eligible. And then next to each eligible book, there will be a display. It'll say add audiobook with virtual voice. Follow instructions and then click publish audiobook. It seems easy enough, so let's give a look. So I'm logged into KDP and I'm gonna scroll down to see if any of my books are eligible for the KDP audiobooks. So for this first book, I see that it says, your ebook isn't eligible for an audiobook. By clicking here, why isn't my ebook eligible? I could see the requirements that your ebook must be reflowable and not a fixed format, and it must have a table of contents. Now, typically I do have a table of contents in mostly all my books, except for my children's books. But as far as reflowable versus fixed format, the reflowable is typically used for books that are mostly text. My books, especially my instructional books, are a combination of text and images, so I have a fixed format. So that's why this particular book is not eligible. Let's see what other ebooks might be eligible for the audiobooks. So I do have children's books that are ebooks, but they have a fixed layout. Let's take a look at my nonfiction books. Okay, so this particular book, which is Author Journey Success, Seven Steps to Your Best Selling Book, is eligible. So this does have the indication your ebook is eligible for an audiobook. So back in the instructions in the email, it said to click add audiobook with virtual voice. If you want to read more about virtual voice, you could hover over this particular phrase and then select learn more about publishing audiobooks. I'm going to go ahead and select add audiobook with virtual voice. And on this screen, the audiobook with virtual voice, if I scroll down for this particular ebook, there's a variety of voices to be explored. There's a few where I can click play, and then there's additional voices here. Let's click play and give a listen and hear some samples. His manner was not effusive. It seldom was, but he was glad, I think, to see me. His manner was not effusive. It seldom was. His manner was not effusive. His manner was not effusive. His manner was not effusive. It seldom was. His manner was not effusive. It seldom was. So I've actually gone through all the samples and I've decided for a feminine voice, American English 11, which sounds like this. His manner was not effusive. It seldom was, but he was glad, I think, to see me. So I'm going to click save and close. And you can see that the voice that I selected is saved. And I'm going to scroll down. Okay, so for audiobook cover, uh, it says KDP will create your audiobook cover from your current cover. Any updates will automatically transfer. View a sample cover. Let's just see what happens. Assuming it will use my cover, which is not that. KDP select enrollment. Okay, so my ebook is currently enrolled in KDP select, so my audiobook has been enrolled to maximize multi-format selection. Very good. As part of the KDP Select program, your audiobook will be made available to listeners through Audible Plus. Very good. Okay. Prices and royalty. Enter a list price for your audiobook. And there's a table below. My ebook is currently $7.99. I'll just put in $5.99 just to see what happens. Okay, because it does say it has to be between $3.99 and $14.99. So if I price it at $5.99, there's a 40% royalty rate. Estimated royalty is $2.40. Okay, I'm going to try $7.99. At the price that I have it for my ebook, the audiobook appears to have an estimated royalty of $3.20. And there's an optional ebook add-on which if they choose to buy the 
ebook as an add-on, it looks like there's an additional royalty of 80 cents. So I'll leave $7.99 for now, just to see what happens. Next, Virtual Voice Studio. We could preview and modify how the audiobook is narrated. Review information about how to edit my audiobook. I can click here. I won't do that just yet. It prompts me to open the Virtual Voice Studio and add a start reading location to my ebook. Okay, so I'm going to click on Open Virtual Voice Studio. So to prevent this error from occurring, just make sure you save periodically. I had to refresh and save it and then it worked fine. Okay, so after refreshing, it took me to the top of the page. I had to reselect the voice that I wanted and I would recommend saving periodically because after I did, it did save it and I did not get the error. So I selected my voice, I scrolled down, I selected save and then it said audiobook saved. So let's continue from there. The pricing and royalty, I'm going to enter $7.99 again. And at this point, let me save it again. Very good. Okay, and finally, I'm going to click Open Virtual Voice Studio. So before it entered the Virtual Voice Studio, it did prompt me to log in to my KDP account. Periodically, it may need you to log in. So now in the Virtual Voice Studio, I could see the table contents on the left. I could see my first page, which appears when you open the book. This particular prompt appeared when I first went in, start and end reading locations, edit the start reading location by selecting the first word in the paragraph. To learn more about SRL and ERL, visit the Help Center. So you can learn more as you go. I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna select play audio just to see how it sounds so far. Author Journey Success by Amelia Griggs Author Journey Success Seven Steps to Your Best-Selling Book by Amelia Griggs Copyright 2022 by Amelia Griggs Okay, so I paused the audio for now. I did want to point out a few settings that I found on the right side under Editing Tools. This is the place where you would click if you want to add a start location. There's also options for pauses, pronunciation, and voice speed. So I explored this. It's grayed out right now. So depending on where you are in the book, it may not be available. Pronunciation, I don't really have anything to edit at this time for pronunciation. And voice speed, I would like to uh, change the voice speed and make it a little faster. It does seem a little slow. So I'm gonna select 25% faster Author journey, success, seven steps to your best-selling book by Amelia Griggs. So I did let it read the copyright information and the information below that. So I'm going to now continue with the table of contents here and click add start location. Table of contents about this book. Bonus free gift. Step one. Foundation and Goals. So since I added a start location at the beginning of the table of contents, the other information is in gray. If you want to bypass any information on the screen and you don't want it to read it, then you want to point to the particular area where you want it to begin. Click Add Start Location. Mine says Edit because I've already selected it. And then I would recommend having it read each page and each chapter. I'm only going to have it read some excerpts here and there to give you an idea of what it sounds like. So I did some research on the back end and what I found is in this virtual voice studio, at the time of creating this video, you can only add one start location per chapter. So if for example, like in my case, I have a very lengthy table of contents. I'm not sure I wanted to read every single line, which has a lot of subcategories. And let's say in this case, I want to have it start reading on this particular section, this chapter, maybe with my dedications. So in that case, I would click on the new location of where I want to move the start location, click edit start location, and that's where it would start reading on that particular chapter. So I've moved to the next chapter, which is the about this book section. I'm going to go ahead and click play audio, and we can listen to an excerpt of this section. About this book. How to use this book. If you have always wanted to harness your love of writing and publish a book, you are in the right place. The intent of this book is to not only share my writing and self-publishing journey with you, but to help you in your journey as well. 
And then you would continue and listen to the content in the entire chapter and make sure you're happy with it. You can also use the options on the right if you wanted to change anything, like for instance, the voice speed or the pronunciation, etc. Speaking of pronunciation, if you have any links in your book, you want to make sure that it's pronouncing it correctly. For instance, in this link, which I've already corrected, it was pronouncing it genie, and some people may interpret this G-E-N-I-E, so I wanted to make sure that the letters are spelled out. So this is how I've corrected it. I spelled out the words using a space in between, include the word dot, slash, and dash. Let's listen to the next link and see if it sounds correct. AmeliaGriggs.podia.com slash free author journey roadmap. So I noticed that it didn't necessarily say the word dot properly and it also did not recite the dashes. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the pronunciation. Okay, I'm just going to paste it in and I'll make some changes. Space dot podia dot com space slash and then put a dash here as well as here and that should do it. Let's listen and double check it. Actually, I'm going to put one more space here. AmeliaGriggs.podia.com slash free dash author dash journey dash roadmap. Okay, and that's correct. And I'll apply the pronunciation. Okay, so I've gone through all my chapters. I've listened to them and proved them. And I did have to apply some occasional pronunciation corrections. And I'll show you a couple in a moment. So also recently, I had to change some content in my paperback and ebook versions, which I did and I uploaded. And after I uploaded the ebook version, the good news is that all my uh, pronunciation changes and corrections were still intact in the virtual voice studio. I did did notice some changes on the left pane. I had made some changes with the heading styles and how it appears on the table of contents. So in general, if you have to update your ebook version while you're still working on your audiobook in Virtual Voice Studio, after you reopen the audiobook, I would say just make sure that all your chapters are intact and darkened. Now this particular section, the copyright page is the only section that I have added the start location a little bit lower so that it would bypass the copyright information and read the about this book which is beyond that page. So basically I would say click on the left sections, the chapters, make sure that everything is darkened and as you would like. And I want to show you a couple pronunciation corrections that I had to make. In this particular chapter, the word content is repeated many times. And when I was proofing it, it was reading it as content instead of content. So the way I corrected that was after highlighting the word, selecting the word, then I select edit pronunciation. I just put a space in there so that it would correctly pronounce it content. And if you do have multiple instances of the word, which I do, then you want to click on this checkbox, apply to all instances. Just be careful that you do want to apply it to that word for that particular pronunciation for all the instances and click apply pronunciation. Okay, so since I've proofed all my chapters and I'm ready to publish, I'll click return to audiobook setup. And then from this screen, I'll scroll down to the bottom. Now before I publish, I'm just going to save one more time and I'm going to go ahead and click publish audiobook. And it's finished. And now I have a pop-up that says, congratulations. Um, it can take up to 72 hours for your title to be available for purchase on Amazon. I'll click done. And in scrolling down and checking that particular book listing, you could see that in addition to having my ebook and paperback, which are live, the Audible audiobook currently has a status of publishing. So I'm going to give it some time and recheck the status a little later today, and I can show you the result. So I've refreshed and it's only been less than a half hour and already the Audible audiobook is live. So now I'm going to swing on over to Audible and look for my newly published audiobook. So to get to Audible, you want to go to audible.com. And if you haven't created an account, you want to sign up here, then go ahead and click sign in. Now I've already signed in and in the search bar here, you can search for your last name or the title of your book. I'll just go ahead and enter my full name and there it is. So I'm excited to 
say this is my first audiobook that I've created in the Virtual Voice Studio. Now, once your audiobook is live and audible, you'll want to test out the process and give a listen. You can have more than one writing location, but there should be one main location. And you can increase the speed to listen to your audiobook a little faster. Where you can go hide and write. If you don't have an office in your house, maybe there is a comfy chair you love. And even faster if you like. To sit in and write. If you do have an office or den with a writing desk, clean your desk. Clutter is no good when writing. At least for me it isn't. And that's all it takes to create an audiobook through KDP in the Virtual Voice Studio. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and smash the like button and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.